Welcome to your Viewpoint, your program of personalities, politicians, and perspectives. We've got some perspectives. We've got a couple of personalities this morning. I have a comment or two about the politicians, but I don't want to get thrown off the air. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you uh, won't. <laughs> well, no, we won't go there. Um, Thankfully, oh, Mr. Miller, the uh, Chris Miller, the weatherman, did us a favor. Uh, when I went to bed last night, I thought we were going to see lots of white stuff. Uh, halfway, didn't see it this morning when I got up. We will have by the time we get home, I'm certain, but anyway. Yeah. Okay, we always, the gentlemen, we always start the program with uh, kudos, or maybe two or three, who knows. Um, I noticed our uh, Lincoln Lady Railers. Have won so far in the basketball tourneys and have moved to the sectional finals. So congratulations to those Good young ladies. Uh, they've had a great year so far. And if this is as far as they go, they've still had a wonderful year. So congratulations to those girls. And I also noted a kind of a, a little commercial thing here, but uh, I noticed that Andrew Hayes and Debbie Last were made principals in the uh, accounting firm with, with which they are associated, J.M. Abbott and Associates. So. Knowing those young folks and, and uh, appreciating what they do uh, up there, I just kind of a little personal accolade and a kudo to them. And uh, we have a noted author up here this morning. Yes, um, we have. Where? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's well, sure. yeah. We had a little word from management there. <laughs> Uh, there will be 10 minutes. Well, why we all applaud to that side? Uh, the, uh, the gentleman has been uh, suggested by a noted uh, Lincolnite who's a storied uh, historian of uh, our great community, uh, Mr. Lee Henson, that uh, maybe uh, Dan ought to be uh, no, uh, nominated for a Nobel Prize. Um, I thought that was, you know, a nice At the thing. very least. I think that was a Pulitzer, Bill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. Well, he is a good writer. Uh, Fedgar, you write well. Thank uh, you, Bill. The, uh, uh, the one thing where I probably would disagree with you, that some of us schleps who uh, might not have measured up to your uh, standards on your nice Valentine uh, treatise to your wife, <laughs> probably didn't think that was such a good article. <laughs> you know, a but, good friend of mine uh, gave me the devil. He lives down by St. Louis uh -huh. and, and reads my columns online uh -huh. at work. And I said, well, print this off and take it home and let your wife read it. And he said, I'm afraid to because she's going to wonder why I've never written anything yeah, you like You kind of raised a barrier for people <laughs> out here. Uh, anyway. Um, Judy, I think it's time we jumped ahead and uh, introduced our guest this morning. Yes. She's the official introductory person up that's, here. Other than that, she doesn't do very much. But. Well, everybody's <laughs> got to have some kind of job, don't they? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, our people today are Danny Tackett, as you might have guessed by now. Bless his little heart. I love him to death. And, Likewise. And uh, Joe Shaler, who is the chairman of the Logan County Veterans Assistance Commission. And uh, the uh, C Logan County Board passed on the 16th mm -hmm. uh, a uh, unanimously a, a recognition of all them? this commission. Huh? I mean, all of them. Yeah, but that all but one, yeah. Oh, yeah. Then it's it's super unanimous if it's all of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at any rate, after go. the <laughs> we have a little English lesson here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, at any rate, uh, this is something that Joe tells me has has been endorsed by many organizations here locally and has been in force in all the surrounding counties since the 60s and 70s, which goes back to almost my youth, you know. <laughs> and uh, so now we seem to be on the move here, and it's going to be on the ballot next Correct. month. Correct. So let us... Just approach it from the get-go, gentlemen, and explain what it is that the Commission wants to accomplish. <clears throat> well, we get past March 15th, and uh, assuming that it, it uh, we have more yeses than noes on the ballot, we get it passed for the funding, <clears throat> the... Um, then the commission will set set out to uh, hire a superintendent. 
who will then work out of the first floor of the county courthouse. We already have an office there established. Used to be the old Rogan County boardroom. Uh -huh. So it's going to be on the first floor, <coughs> um, and it will be equipped and everything. So we'll the first uh, order of business after the election is to find a superintendent and hire them. What the superintendent, uh, some of the primary things I'll be doing, of course, number one is filing claims to the VA, uh, because right now uh, we we do have someone that comes over from Decatur once a week to the Oasis, uh, and he'll do that um, when he can. So we really don't we really don't have a regular daily assistance. Yeah, regular. So we're really kind of a satellite out of Decatur, uh -huh. out of Macon County. So we don't have our own veteran service officer here. So that's really the primary thing, number one, is have that superintendent's going to become a trained veteran service officer if they're not already. Uh, ideally is to get someone who's already trained to do it. But if not, we'll get them trained. Uh, so they'll handle the claims, filing claims. Uh, one of the other areas that, uh, that they'll cover is what they refer to as emergency financial assistance. Uh, what that comes down to, uh, and this is for honorably discharged veterans, mm -hmm. um, if let's say for example in the area of their rent or mortgage payment or utility, one of those three areas, mm -hmm that they are a month behind for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Something's happening, a huge car repair, something's happened, a medical emergency, and they realize they can't make that payment. Um, the superintendent has will have the same criteria to go through uh, as they would have it with the, what they call the Illinois Human Services, uh, which is really a, a computer program to go through about their employment, uh, residence, things like that. Make sure their income is meets the income criteria. They're not making too much money. So assuming they meet all that criteria, uh, and uh, and I always use the example that let's say they can't, they're behind in an Amron payment and it's three hundred dollars. Uh, if they meet all the criteria, then the superintendent will then have the authority contact Amron and make that payment directly for them. Mm -hmm. And having said that, we also impose a limit and that's probably, I'm going to guess, to be $800 to $1,000 per year per veteran family. Mm -hmm. So that of means for their dependents. Pardon? Of outright assistance. Of outright assistance, <clears throat> right. So we're not going to have a frequent flyer showing up every two or three months. So, you know, I can't make the rent payment this month or I can't. Yeah. Now that falls under another heading, which is to outsource them to the right place in the county. Who should you be talking to? We're here for an emergency. This is no longer an emergency. This is becoming something that, that's, you know, is yeah, ongoing. So now we need to get them in front of some other people. And that's one of those things that, that talking to all the superintendents and, and a lot of the people in commissions over the last six or seven months uh, of our neighbors surrounding neighboring counties is uh, when a veteran comes in, we have several of them here. Uh, we're a little reluctant first to come and ask for help to begin with. So one of the things that, that we, I have found that they've accomplished, they're a little more easy to come in and talk to other veterans and say, hey, here's my issue. Mm -hmm. uh, really then you become the, the advocate, if you will, saying, okay, here's what we need to do. You need to be going to this office here, and here's who you need to talk to. We're going to call them. We're going to get an appointment for you. We're going to get you in front of those people because this is an ongoing situation. You need a bigger safety net under you than this one-time emergency assistance with you. Uh, it could be for job training. It could be for retraining purposes, particularly since we've created a whole new batch of veterans over the last 14 years and mm -hmm. there's no real end inside of that situation mm -hmm. uh, we have a, a lot of folks coming back that what they were doing they can't do now because that's disappeared or it won't pay them enough 
so we we have avenues of starting to find where we can train them or retrain them. So really, we've become that 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 source, if you will, mm -hmm. of uh, helping the immediate problem, and then hopefully remedying a long-term problem for them, whatever that may be. Um, some of the other minor things that that we're working on is that, of course. We're sitting here amongst about three quarters of a million people that are in a 50 mile radius of us. The problem is a lot of the services that the veterans need are not here. They're that 50 miles away or 40 miles away. And we do have some who, who need to get to medical appointments. And so we're working at a, hopefully an agreement with the Logan Mason Public Transportation mm -hmm. where if we can get them to Springfield to the clinic or to Peoria to the clinic or over to Decatur if they need to go to Danville because Springfield uh, VAC has three vans and they bring people to Peoria if they need it or they take them to Danville. And a lot of things are being outsourced now to Danville, and a lot of things that were in Danville, unfortunately, are being outsourced clear to Indianapolis now. So it, <laughs> these services are moving farther away, not they closer. Sure are. So our goal is and uh, to take that and be able to pick that individual up at their home with our service, get them to Decatur, for example. The bus goes through from Springfield, picks them up, gets them to Danville, brings them back, we pick them up again and bring them home. Mm. So we're making it a little bit easier for them to be able to get to that medical attention because I've, I've dealt with several families who, well, we moved Dad to Peoria because we finally, that's where most of the medical treatment was at the VA center there. So we finally just had to relocate him. So there's another person that left the county because we didn't have the facilities here to do it. Now the, the VA is currently trying to put this choice program in place, which is a whole other area, but it, it's essentially, if you're more than 40 miles away from medical attention and or you have to wait more than 30 days to get an appointment, you can go to a local doctor and they'll reimburse them. But this is kind of like starting Medicare all over again. They're very slow at getting doctors to sign up to do it because, of course, they're worried about being reimbursed and oh, all, they're all burned, those logistics. You know, they've been burned. They've been burned, yes. Sir. State Except of Illinois? That. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, we're that's going to be a slow process. But if we could get that done, that eliminates so much of this running that, I mean, we've got a new hospital there. We have doctors there. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just a matter of we've got to get that program, the kinks worked out of it, and mm -hmm. I don't know how many years that'll take, but in the meantime, you still need to get people with their doctors and be treated. So we have a we have an aging veteran population that, uh, particularly the Vietnam era, where most of their illnesses are not popping up until they get into their 50s and 60s and 70s mm -hmm. yeah. and that's what we're encountering now so um, you know, we, we need to we need to be able to help those people right now get what they need well, I come back I have a little history here Joe if I may 70 years ago we had a Veterans Assistance Commission I'm not sure the exact name of it but it ran out of the courthouse AJ Berryhill was the point guy there yeah. and uh, um, all of us coming home and uh, various, you know, most of us assimilated into civilian life and didn't have any problems. Yeah. So always inevitably there are some that have special problems. Right. Uh, some of their, which they couldn't help at all, yeah. uh, some of their own doing. And that, I, at some point in time, it just kind of drafted off into the clouds. Right. And that, be, that would be the... Uh, um, the apple cloud, I mean, <laughs> yeah. but they just disappeared, and I don't know what happened there, and so now we're renewing this, and I, I would just guess it's the same thing under flying under a different flag. How did your interest, where, when's come with your interest in this? How do you get so involved? You're very articulate in stating what what you're trying to do. I, I the short answer is I don't know how I got involved in it. <laughs> I, I don't even know how I got here today except for a truck out here. 
<laughs> because we asked you up here today to talk and about it. I am very appreciative on the ballot, that. On the ballot, <laughs> I meant so. to say that right up front, yeah. that I'm very appreciative of this opportunity for the commission to be heard. But it's, um, I, I've, I've said that to my wife more than once. I said, I don't know how we even got here. Uh, or how, I, other than the fact, as I was telling Judy, I think because I'm probably the old guy that was retired. Most of the people on this commission, and there's there's 19 other people that are military veterans on this commission from the various. Posts. I did not know that. That's yeah. a, that's a, that's a big group. Yeah, and it's growing. It will grow as we go along. I think it includes representatives from all. The posts, all veterans posts, the uh, legions, the VFWs, the Marine Corps League, and we have a in the county. Eight. Right. Each one has representatives on that commission. Right. So we have, uh, but most of them work. Yeah. And they're they're still in that working category. And um, uh, I was I got involved in this. Uh, 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 from Dr. Hepler, who's the chairman of the Logan County Board, uh -huh. uh, really months ago, just by chance, when they uh, created the commission uh, to come up with a with a uh, burial fund for indigent veterans, mm -hmm. and then that led my interest was really trying to set up Logan County as a Purple Heart County to get that established. So I'm a junior vice commander with the military with the Purple Heart, mm -hmm. and we had just completed that task in Sagamon County. So I was trying to move it to Logan County since this is where I live. And uh, Hepler and I got talking, and, and Michelle Ramlo, who is the commander of the VFW in Lincoln, uh, she was involved in this. And uh, anyway, one thing led to another, and and uh, after we got through the Purple Heart project, and uh, one of the things that was suggested to, to my wife and I, to Melanie and I, was that we need to uh, somebody needs to go out and raise some funds because you're going to need money to do this, mm -hmm. and perhaps the two of you should take that on. Mm -hmm. So we did, and of course that in, invariably meant she had to go start talking to people. Mm -hmm. And one thing led to another, and then we ended up in front of civic groups and business leaders. And uh, one of the, the the big turning points of this was this gentleman here, who said, "You need to talk to Bill, and you need to talk to Bill Thomas." Mm -hmm. And I tell you what, after talking to him and then talking to you. It was like the booster rockets kicked in, and I got launched out there. <laughs> and yeah. here we are, months later, and about 35 groups later that I've spoken to. Uh, but we've had such an outpouring of support that, uh, and the money donations have come in. And I, I mean, it's just been a very humbling experience, to, to say the least. That. Uh, We've been very blessed by all of this, that, uh, this, the support we've gotten. Last night I was at Mount Pulaski and uh, spoke to their city council and they gave us an endorsement as Atlanta City Council did. And, um, Golden County Board, the city government. And we're, we're just, and so many people are stacking up behind us that it's just... But it's important to point out that this is going to be a referendum matter. Yes, yes. It's and that's the purpose of having Joe Shaler. And, and the reason we brought Fidger up is <laughs> <laughs> Fidger is, of course, a little bit like earlier. He knows how to put things down on paper. Mm -hmm. um, that's why, and he's boosting this program 100%. And that's why we asked Dan to come up. And that's why we want you to come up and, and talk about this to our listeners because it's going to be on the ballot. And yes. I think it's very important. And I think if, um, before we get into that part, if Mr. Ash is ready, we're going to acknowledge some sponsors. Now we're going to get right back to a viewpoint. Go right ahead, Jim. Well, right back live in the studios here. Uh, if I can have control of the mic, must, must be I'm so sorry. Uh, I'll talk to, talk to you about that off air sometime. Uh, our guests this morning are Dan Tackett, Fidler in my lexicon, uh, <laughs> and uh, Joe Shaler. Uh, I might add that uh, Joe's a veteran of the Vietnam conflict. Um, and we thank you for that much for that, Joe. Um, I'm 
just about ready to get into something I don't want to get into in the way of uh, how those boys were and ladies were welcomed home or not welcomed home as the case may be. So in any event, uh, Joe has taken the uh, uh, reins firmly in his hands and uh, we're going to have an issue on the ballot which he's going to tell us about in just a few seconds uh, and uh, we urge you uh, to vote for this issue. Uh, the um, various city and community governments, uh, boards and so forth, have uh, supported the municipal municipalities, I'll get that word out sometime, uh, <laughs> have uh, endorsed this, the county government is endorsing it, and we urge the voters to endorse it to, so it could be made uh, a happening. So um, go ahead, Joe, let's talk about uh, the wording that's going to be on the ballot and uh, remind people Surely we don't have to ask you to get out and vote, folks. Yeah. My God, with that. You probably have to beg them too, Bill, yeah, well. to, be, to be honest. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Joe. <laughs> well, the, the, on the re, if I can set the scenario up on where it's going to be on the ballot, first off, on the Republican ballot, it's going to be on the back side at the bottom. Because on the Republican ballot, on the front side, there are so many presidential candidates Unfortunately, about two-thirds of them are, are gone now. But, uh, and then, of course, all the people who are trying to be nominated to be at their convention. So I went through and was marking all those off yesterday, and it's like, okay. Uh, but you flip it over, and then, of course, we have so many uncontested races in the county, uh -huh. but they're still listed there. Um, and then um, um, at the very bottom over in the right hand corner will be this question. On a Democratic ballot, it's on the front page because. Well, they still have them here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, they just do. a query. All yeah. six of All underground. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, sure. But oh, what, it, what, what the question will be, and I'll just read it as it is going to appear. Shall the Logan County. Shall the Logan County establish a tax for Veterans Assistance Commission of a levy not to exceed 0 .03 tenths percent of the assessed value annually on a taxable property of the county in accordance with, and then it gives a statute, for the purpose of providing assistance to military veterans and their families pursuant to the Military Veterans Act, which was updated in 1945. So we're a little bit behind here. Uh, the proceeds of any tax so levied shall be used exclusively for the assistance purposes authorized under this act and administration thereof. And then it has a yes or a no. Under supplemental information, it will give you an example. The approximate amount of taxes extendable, if approved, at 0 0.03 tenths percent. But based, that's a maximum. That's a maximum based on the most recent assessed value would produce $143,720. So what that means is, on their example, a home that has a fair market value of $100,000, that equals to $10 a year. Now that's assuming we were going to use $143,000. Yeah. Of the surrounding counties, which all of them around us have this commission already in force, and as we alluded to, have had it for 30 or 40 years, uh, some even longer, they operate on about a third of what they could. Uh -huh. In other words, what they could be allocated. And they do a, an outstanding job on that. Nobody is even remotely close to drawing the maximum that they could. And I always use Peoria as an example that they have three, uh, we have 2,400 veterans. They have 14,000 in Peoria County. They have three veteran service officers and they operate on about a $200,000 budget. At 200000 last year, they filed enough claims for their veterans to bring in $4.5 million. That's $22 on the dollar return. Mm. Not counting what it did just emotionally for those veterans and their families. We're talking about the actual money. That also doesn't take into consideration all the pension money and health benefits that were paid into that county. Mm -hmm. Last year, uh, 2014, Logan County veterans 
in pension money, health benefits, and so on and so forth, brought in four million dollars into the county. Nobody ever realizes the kind of money that's being brought in by these 2,400 veterans and their families. That's coming from federal money. That's not coming from the county. That's coming back into the county. And so, it's being spent in the local economy. Right. And what we're looking at, of course, this is going to do nothing but enhance that once you have somebody here that's going to be filing for claims for them. They don't have to worry about going to Peoria or Springfield or whatever. That's going to show them the benefits that they're entitled to because most veterans, because there's so many programs out there, mm -hmm. have no idea of everything they can take advantage of. Right. So uh, my challenge is always that we're, it comes, it, it, it has to by statute, it's a tax potentially. But on the other hand, this is a huge investment in every veteran of Logan County because of the return that we're going to get. We want this to be a veteran-friendly community, and this is this is one huge way of doing it. So the challenge to the you know I always I I know I'm kind of rambling on here, but I. I, I think back of when I was 11 years old, I just turned 11 years old, in January of 1961 when a, when a young man was <clears throat> trying to challenge his country on, you know, what can you do for the country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now I challenge people on what can you do for your county veterans now, and that's to vote for this, because they Good deserve analogy. it. They deserve it. Their families deserve it. Judy has a question here yes. uh, that a caller, and by the way, we're so remiss, we get so involved, Judith Kay, in our guests, it's, uh, often and too often, we forget to say that 648-5510 <laughs> is the number to call if our guests have questions uh, or uh, comments. So, Judith Kay, we had a caller call in a while ago, and uh, go ahead, please. Well, this, whoever it was, wants to know uh, what, they thought it was a, a beautiful idea. But what's the cost? I think you've pretty well addressed that, but is there anything more on that subject that either of you would like to bring up? Yeah, I'd like to elucidate just a minute on that, uh, uh, on that word tax. Mm -hmm. You know, you hear that word and boy, the heels dig in hard. Right, exactly. Uh, so uh, we, want to, we want to really emphasize that, that the amount mm -hmm. on a $100,000 piece of property right. is 10 bucks. Yeah, and, and, no and, and the reality is that uh, one of the, I was talking to several of our Logan County members, board members. I said the reality is if we operate on the same proportion as the other counties do, which I, I'm pretty sure we will, about a third of that, uh, it's going to be about the cost of a, of a Big Mac, <laughs> yeah. what it's going to cost a, a property owner per yeah. year. But what they're going to do is is just going to be phenomenal as far as helping veterans in this county. Our caller asked what was the cost. I, 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 we, we are assuming that she was asking the question, what's it going to cost the taxpayers? Uh, perhaps she's having a question as to what's it going to cost to run this program. Right. And you, uh, so let's try to catch both sides of that okay. question. Okay. Well, uh, once we once we know the referendum has passed, and we're going to sit down with the, with the finance committee of the Logan County Board, and I'm going to kind of give you some parameters that we're probably going to be in the thirty-five to fifty thousand dollar range as an annual budget. If you look at most of these budgets, about ha half of what they spend is paying for that superintendent. Uh -huh. Yeah, I was going to say that's not very much because you have to pay somebody. Right. So you and just covered that question right yeah. there. So we're we're going to be in that thirty-five. Now again, again, it says we could drop to one hundred and forty-three thousand mm -hmm. if we used it all. Mm -hmm. So we're probably uh, I'm I'm being a little bit vague, but we've got to sit down and really. Okay, how experienced is this superintendent going to be? Because they will be a county employee. Mm -hmm. If it's someone who's already a, a veteran service officer, has the credentials, you're going to obviously pay him more because we don't have to train him. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to do this halfway. No. We're going to do it right. right. And if they're not a VSO, then we're going to make sure they are trained. The other part of it is we know 
this year the cost is going to be considerably less because we're going to we're, we're going to be well into the fiscal year before we even have a chance to get started. So we're really looking at 2017. So 2017, we're probably going to be in that 35 to 50 thousand dollar range. This tax will not show up on a homeowner until 2017. So then that money comes out in 2018. In the interim, the county council then simply has to find a way to fund us that money uh, from somewhere. But it'll be anticipated revenue is what they're going to call it, what they know will be coming in. Mm -hmm. So we're really going to be operating at about maybe 20, 25,000 this year, but probably the 35 to 50 range next year. But as that goes up, if it goes up, then in direct proportion will be the amount of money coming back in claims into, into our veterans' pockets back into the county, which is going to be used in this county. That's what's going to keep them here. Um, the tax to the homeowners, again, I, I, I don't think I'm going too far out there to, to say if it's in the two to four dollar range on a hundred thousand dollar home, uh, like I said about the cost of a Big Mac, right? It, it's going to take care of all the needs that we have. We we'll still have plenty of room left over that we're not using. What happens to all of us? I don't care if it's Golden County or Sangamon County, or Menard, any. Mm -hmm. We all go about our daily activities, mm -hmm. and we're not aware of underneath, uh, under the cover somewhere. We have a lot of of veterans, men and ladies, not today, who have hit a hard wall somewhere, right? And many of them unbeknownst to all of us I have a real problem right <laughs> and this is a place that they can go to for that assistance exactly one I don't thing know how Vietnam we can turn did, that down one yeah. thing Vietnam did for us <laughs> as you'll recall given time and distance is uh, I, th I think we looked back and we thought about the way the Vietnam veterans were treated when they came home and I think we all took part of the blame for shame and it made us much more aware I think of the needs and the problems that veterans have yeah. which uh, should uh, should be of help to you in yes. establishing this yeah. Danny here you know here you were bless your heart came up here in the blizzard of all time <laughs> and we haven't let you say two words say something That's profound not <laughs> profane <laughs> profound you know I, I will try I, <laughs> let me kind of explain why I'm, I'm here gladly today uh, I believe in this guy Joe over here to no end he is a real trooper for all our veterans. Uh, he had a pretty pretty rough go, had a bad Easter Sunday in Vietnam, got wounded over there. Within recent years he's successfully battled cancer related to Agent Orange mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from Vietnam. Well we all remember that word don't we? Oh absolutely. So Number one, I, I'm here to support Joe, but probably more importantly, I really believe in this Veterans Assistance Commission. I mean, this was this was actually authorized by the state legislature in the 1870s, where counties could form their own commissions. Think of that, assumably to take care of Civil War veterans. Civil War, yes. mm -hmm. And that piece of legislation was updated in 45 1945 mm. you know because we had two huge batches of veterans from the I two mean. world wars then and as a result of those pieces of legislation virtually every county around Logan County has had one of these commissions for years mm -hmm. and it's kind of a no-brainer that hey it's time Logan County caught up with the times and uh, did what they could do for their veterans. That's why I'm here. Well, we appreciate that, Dan, very much. You know, those Thank of us you. who came home from the wars uh, unscathed or virtually unscathed, uh, <coughs> get, on, get on with our daily life and, and activities, and we 
tend to give short shrift to those uh, folks who came home badly scathed in one way or another, uh, physically, mentally. Uh, there are some real problems still, still out there. And uh, we need to remember that. And uh, exactly, I, I do not see uh, how our Golden County citizens could begin to even think of not voting in favor of this. Uh, Amen. Hopefully, it will be overwhelming. Uh, go ahead, Judith Kay. Something was said about you think that there's going to be a separate ballot for this. If you, in a primary in Illinois, a lot of people choose not to declare their politics. Exactly. And therefore, they'll be able to get just a short sheet. Well, I would think so. Yeah, Have you checked it, into that, it, Jill? It's my understanding that they can. You just ask for that ballot. Right. Yes. So that's, that's a plus. Yeah. Yes. So if you're a voter and choose not to declare yourself in the in the primary here, you still have a chance yeah. to back this. And I think if if any of us choose not to, then shame on us. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it, Good for you. And, and there's been a number of uh, older veterans who've made the comment that, you know, I voted for this. That's the only thing I voted for. <laughs> they flipped that ballot over. They said, I, I don't, you know, and I said, as long as you vote for this, you know, you've now done something for your community right here. It's not federal, it's not state, it's right here in your backyard who you're taking care of. The money's collected here, the money will be spent here on our veterans. It's not going anywhere else. And we're gonna to try to figure out how to get some of that federal money back into this into this county to the people. That Since it was it. ours to begin with. It's ours to begin with. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Let's get it back here. Yeah, which reminds me of <laughs> they call Social Security entitlement. Well, bull marky. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mrs. Yeah. Bubby didn't say that. I had to clean it up. I don't want to get turned off yeah. the air. Yeah. <laughs> you know. But you know, that's not in time. We paid for that, for God's sake. Right. Why would they call that an entitlement? Yeah. Just, right. so, you, you know, I, I guess I should should really say this. Num number one, I'm a veteran and very proud of it, of the Vietnam era. Thank God Uncle Sam never gave me a ticket to go to, into the jungle, yeah. uh, like poor Joe over here. But uh, I, I'll have to say this for the folks in Logan County. When I came home from my service... I was treated very well, you know, and I think Logan County folks really respected the veterans from that era. Well, we're salt of the earth people here. Exactly. Yeah. Right. I, on, uh, along the same lines, I had army buddies from larger metropolitan mm -hmm. areas, and I heard plenty of pretty sad stories from yeah. those folks yes. how they were treated. My brother was spit upon hey, oh in God. the airport well, we because he had his uniform on. We saw yeah. that, you know, in, in the news clips time yeah. after time after time, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. It you was know, a mean, different era, I guess a different war. Yeah. Just a personal yeah. aside, you mentioned the jungles. Well, I was teaching communications over at Chinook Field and when you're young you're dumb, you know. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Goes with the Torah Terry. Uh, <laughs> and uh, there was a, uh, the word came from Washington that uh, they were looking for some volunteers for a special project. Well, as I said, young and dumb. And I volunteered. And uh, people came from wherever. And we took tests, physical and mental tests. And for whatever reason, I flunked. <laughs> well, how lucky can you get? <laughs> we found out what this was for. <clears throat> Being trained for a special mission, they took their butts over and dropped them behind the lines in the China Burma India theater. <laughs> how lucky can you be to be dumb? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, before we close, yes. Joe, would you like to have a, a closing comment? The clock has run out on us again. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, I just think the summation would be we've, we've had such great response to this and, and everyone that I've spoken to. And uh, I'm just, you know, just praying that all that translates into a vote, the vote he has for it. Uh, I, I can just absolutely promise people, and I don't make very many promises, but this will be one vote uh, that's not for a candidate, <laughs> but it'll be one vote they will never regret. Well put. 
Well put. Our guest this morning has been Joe Shaler and uh, his sidekick Dan Tackett speaking about the uh, Veterans Commission, which is so badly needed here. And so we urge you to vote uh, yes for that. I will close uh, this morning's program with this comment that I found. Caring for veterans should not be a partisan issue. It's an American issue. Thank you for being part. That's a good one.